stewarding the body and the temple that God has given you from mind, soul, body, spirit, the physical body, the psych, the psychological parts of you, the relational parts of you, Mm -hmm. the investing that you're doing of your time. Like I think of that as self-love. It's not like I need to go get a massage and get my nails and my facial done every week type getaway. It's saying, am I getting into the presence of the Lord to fuel my soul? Hey, everybody, and welcome to the FYI podcast where we talk about faith, life, adulting, and unpack the questions that you are asking. I'm Micah Keneally. I'm Josiah Keneally. We're your hosts. You can send in your question on YouTube through Instagram. Follow us at FYI podcast. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we do, whether it's about relationships, finances, adulting, faith and theology. We're really excited. And it's summer here as we're recording today. Um, Man, if you're not subscribed to our channel on YouTube or wherever you're streaming, please do. And that way you'll never miss another episode. And today's question, Devin, asked us, how does the idea of self-love as we know it fit in within the confines of scripture? That's a good question. It's a fun one. And babe, I think that you and I were talking just before we press record, you had a great thought or two, just as far as looking at maybe what popular culture in 2022 would define as self-love. I had to write this down because it's so true. And so good. So here it is. Self-love definition is a state of appreciation for oneself that grows from actions that support our physical, psychological, and spiritual growth. Inflation, love of self, pride in oneself, maybe even some narcissism, conceit, or love of self. So that's a very layered question. So there's the element of truly taking care of your body, mind, and soul, and your ability to do that. And then there's a self-love where it becomes narcissism, where we become self, I don't know, infatuated with ourselves, that we are better than what we probably are. (laughs) We think of ourselves very highly, right? Mm -hmm. So those are just some things that I found when it came to self-love, the definition of what that is um, in this day and age on the worldly side of things. But the Bible does allude to some pretty cool things when it does talk about self-care and self-love. Wow. You know, I forget who said something like this, but I'm reminded of when you said that it's like somebody had a quote that was similar to this, that they said of themselves, I'm probably not as bad as the worst criticism about me. And I'm probably not as good as the best compliments about me. Ooh, that's good. And just having a healthy dose of reality. Totally. A healthy view of oneself. And don't you, is this just me, babe? Or would you say that like, it's kind of like a teeter totter where, where like, remember at the playgrounds? I don't want to teeter totter. Yeah. So it's like, there's a healthy and then there's unhealthy balance of like, you want to be in the middle somewhere because you could think of yourself with like a false humility. You could think of yourself as like, wretched and, and those types of things. But then on the other side, you could be narcissistic or like with self-love. I think that was a really great definition. Yeah, totally. And That's breakdown. So um, because Devin's just asking like, how does the idea of self-love as we know it fit within the confines of scripture where I go immediately is the teachings of Jesus. Luke mm-hmm. chapter nine, verse 23, Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple. He said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. The words of Jesus. And so I just differentiated in my mind, the difference of self-love and self-denial. Yeah, that's good. Because even I know I've heard Jonathan Pakluda, he has broken down, um, I've seen him uh, like just share about the idea of self-care versus soul care. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was all about caring for one's soul, self-care, spa days, those types of things. It seems like younger generations and we live in this cultural moment where it's like, treat yourself. I just did. And, (laughs) and, and not that that's bad, but, but it's just like, 
I, I think that it's it's got to be a level of moderation. Well, and here's the thing I'd say with this day and age, we live. It was it's statistically found that the United States of America is the busiest country. Like we as Americans keep ourselves running at a unnecessary breakneck speed to say that we're busy and maybe not successful or maybe very successful in our own eyes, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And I think when we we talk about like the self-care that JP was pro probably alluding to, not every week you need to burn it at both ends of the candle and then take a week off and ask for a raise in the process of saying, oh, but I'm going on a spa day. Oh, I'm going on a trip. I'm going on a self-care backpacking extravaganza. Like, I think there's like, I think of those things as just like the enemy of, of the heart. Mm -hmm. You remember Andy Stanley's book, yeah. Enemies of the Heart? Great and book. he has one chapter and I can't remember what word ties with this, but he has a word and that ties like, God owes me. Yeah. And I think as Christians, we can't approach God of like, I oh, God, I've worked so hard. Like you owe me. I get a self-care day or I get whatever day. I think with this question that Devin is actually asking in my, in how I unpacked self-love is actually stewarding the body and the temple that God has given you from mind, soul, body, spirit, the physical body, the psych, the psychological parts of you, the relational parts of you, mm -hmm. the investing that you're doing of your time. Like I think of that as self-love. It's not like I need to go get a massage and get my nails and my facial done every week type getaway. It's saying, am I getting into the presence of the Lord to fuel my soul to complete the rest of this week? Am I getting in the prayer closet to uncover what God has been trying to speak to me for decades because I've been running in the opposite direction? Have we slowed our mind down enough to not be overstimulated, not to be over-resourced and choosing to be underutilized because we're lying idle because of analysis paralysis? Mm -hmm. I think that's where we have to do a personal inventory when we uncover this question of how is my mental state? Am I stressed? Am I anxious? Am I watching too much TV? What is my escape goat when it comes to I'm overwhelmed? What what do I turn to? Yeah. Is it a substance? Is yeah. it social media? Is it busyness? Is it, do I know how to be alone and away from people? Or am I putting myself in crowded spaces and rooms because I just, I don't know what I would do if I had 10 minutes by myself to hear my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the 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 mental like what's my mental capacity because we're not hardwired to be computers running around. Right. Inventory, mental. How is my mental state? I know when I'm exhausted because I haven't been taking care of myself to sleep. Yep. To eat healthy. Yep. To hydrate. Yep. To exercise. To be in good and godly community that's actually life giving versus me constantly pouring out. So I think even before we get to how do we, it's let's take a personal inventory. Why do I feel like I'm running myself? ragged? Or what does self-care look like when it comes to me stewarding the temple, the mm -hmm. body mm -hmm. that God has given me? Am I eating whatever I want, staying out late, consuming things, garbage in, garbage out from my mind to my eyes, to my, my, my words, to the things I listen to? What is filling and fueling my soul? Is it the word of God and the joy of the Lord? Or is it the hatred and the bitterness of discontentment because I'm not who I want to be, but yet I'm unwilling to change. Like, I think that all has to do with self-care because it does affect the soul care. Yep. So I think when we get down to the root of where am I off kilter on, what's that thing called the middle of the, I can't remember the name of it. It's like a little triangle in the middle of your little teeter totter. I'm having yeah, a yeah, yeah. dumb attack. All I can think of is pendulum and that is a clock. It's not fulcrum, is it? I think we we'll pretend it is. If we're stupid people, we're apologize. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, I, I keep picturing this life that's maybe out of balance. And I keep picturing like on, on the one side, there is so there's a lot in a generation who would find themselves busy burning the candle at both ends. That would be a little bit of my default by nature. And life gets heavy in yep. that, in that you can't, you can't live there and you can't stay there. You can have a season there. And you get addicted to the dopamine. You get addicted to the adrenaline. You get Truly. addicted to the busy as Brady Boyd mm -hmm. calls it. Um, binge watching is like the other end of the pendulum. It's like if, if one side of people, their, their default is like burning the candle at both ends. The other side is like, Hey, I'm going to kick back. And what's amazing for both 
is the invitation of Jesus that he said, if any of you are weary Mm -hmm. and burden come to me and I will give you rest. I think of, again, looking at the teachings Mm -hmm. and the life of Jesus, it was said of Jesus in a poem that John Mark Comer includes in his book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Mm -hmm. One of the things that he referred to um, was Jesus being the three and a half mile an hour God Mm -hmm. because he walked everywhere. He wasn't in a hurry. And I, I think that Coming back to self-love, self-care, soul care, our concepts we've kind of unpacked. I do look at this Hmm. and I would love to hear your thoughts. I don't know if I have any. One of the things Jesus said is when asked like some of the greatest commands, well, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and then love your neighbor Mm -hmm. as yourself. Mm -hmm. So he does refer to self-love. Yeah. And I think well, that last part of that is love yourself as your neighbor. And I think, I think we think more highly of ourselves than we want to admit. So I think we look, we have the potential as humans to look down on others. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if the bar of love is, is here for yourself and you have elevated yourself above others, wow, that verse to me brings it down to equal playing field at the foot of the cross of saying, nope, if you're going to elevate yourself, then your, your neighbor better be above you. And I think that that's an amazing, comp- it's amazing just to think about that. And I, I will share this. So our friend, Danny, who lives, um, who does the street ministry yeah. in yeah. Nashville, Tennessee, yeah, yeah, yeah. Daniel, I shouldn't say Daniel, he shared something uh, on one of the things that he was teaching and preaching about. And I was like, wow, that's so good. It has to do with neighbors. And he was just like, he had new mate. He was living with his parents at the time. His neighbors, the new neighbors had moved in. He goes, mom, our neighbors are so blessed. And she goes, honey, like, why do you, why do you say that? He goes, because they live next to us. And he's like, they can experience the love of the Lord, the joy of the Lord. They get to encounter Christ every time they encounter us. And we just get to love them for who they are and show the love of Christ each and every single day. And I'm like, that is a part of the verse. Love yourself as your neighbor. So when you learn love your neighbor as yourself. So when you if you love yourself, you will learn how to love your neighbor. Yeah. And when you love your neighbor as yourself, wow. Like and I thought it was funny how he said that because they're both being blessed, right? They really are. So I just thought that was just a funny thing that he was saying. I was like, he's not wrong because if we are called to be the hands and feet of Christ, we should live like Christ. And when people encounter you, they should encounter a piece of Christ every single place they go. So when you start loving your neighbors as yourself, wow, I pray that God would just continue to humble our hearts. Yeah. Because we're supposed to be humble people before the feet of the Lord. And I just think when we start elevating ourselves, pride creeps in. Yeah. But when we can say, you know what? I'm going to love my neighbor even though they don't know Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm going to love my neighbor even though they have roosters that crow three houses down at all times of the day, not knowing when the sun's coming up for whatever reason. I'm going to love my neighbors, even when they're doing snow removal at 3 a.m. and they're waking up the whole house. I'm going to love my neighbors when they have some a loss in their family and yeah. I, we're going to visit and give them cookies. Yeah. I'm going to love our neighbor, even though their tree fell on our tree, because we're going to show them love of Christ and say, accidents happen. I'm glad you didn't fall out of the tree and I'm glad you and your household are okay. It's only a tree. That's demonstrating love through the smallest things when they're beating themselves up or they're walking through hell on earth. Yeah. So. I would just say, if we can do that as Christians, m- more people would want to be Christians if we were true Christians. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. I just heard it the other day. I was just like, wow, why isn't Christianity as contagious as it should be? Maybe more Christians need to start becoming more like Christ. Well, we're all and, guilty, myself included. <laughs> and and how I think we are called to live to that end is something that Tom Trzinski, who's a friend of ours, he has always said that how we can experience joy is by putting Jesus first, others second, and ourself, yourself third Mm -hmm. or last. Mm -hmm. And that is the life of God, the life of the Holy Spirit, the life of of us Mm -hmm. is an invitation to put Jesus first. It's good. It's an invitation to put our others ahead of ourselves, prefer others, and then to put ourselves last or after those. And I think that... What you had talked about, Micah, of elevating our love for our neighbors, you know, that is really what Jesus is saying. And those are all true examples in our neighborhood. Just so yes. you know, that was me being real. <laughs> and I love, I love all of them. <laughs> I love it. And 
And so, man, I think that there's a place also to the person. I just feel prompted off script to say to the person that maybe you've always struggled to love yourself. Mm, that's good. Um, it's not healthy either to look in the mirror and say, God, you made a mistake when you made me. Mm, right. And yeah. so in the process of glorifying God or putting God and maybe even putting others before yourself, I think there might be a, a listener or, or a group of people watching where you've just always had a little bit of a harder time loving yourself. And when you don't love yourself in the healthy way, in other words, see yourself as you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. What Paul said about you is true, that you're a saint. Mm -hmm. You're a son or daughter of the king. So you are royalty and, and you're precious in God's sight. God didn't make a mistake when he made you. Right. What Psalm said that even when God knits you together in your mother's womb, that is the truth about you. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to end or close this episode without addressing the person that maybe you've, you're, you're feeling guilt or shame that needs to come off because God made you as his masterpiece created as Ephesians 2 10 talks about mm -hmm. to do good works that God prepared in advance for you to do. And so as we're talking about self-love, um, we don't want to be narcissistic where you're in love and infatuated with yourself right? and think that you're all that in a bag of chips. But at the same time, to, to deny God's love for you is to say that he made a mistake when he made you and he didn't. Mm -hmm. He has a plan and a purpose and you are chosen. Mm-hmm. He loves you. He created you. The world is a better place with you in it. And somebody needs to hear that message. And so if you know somebody that's struggling, send them that message. So good. That's so good. And I think when you do realize that you're a chosen person, you begin to un under understand the plans and the purpose that God does have for you, that you are not a mistake, that you are um, truly do have something to offer this world and the people around you because somebody's waiting on your yes. Wow. And so I just pray that you say yes to whatever God has before you, if you feel prompted to do that. And maybe you're listening today and you're like, I've never even said yes to Jesus in my life. I have, I've been in the driver's seat my whole life. I'm making the decisions. I'm calling the shots. Listen, we want to invite you on one of the most beautiful grand adventures, and it is the ultimate adventure. And we love you too much not to tell you about it. We love you too much to see you go somewhere where you're going to be in hell, literally for the rest of your life. And we want to yeah. say, Hey, we can offer you heaven. And it's not, we are not heaven. We have Jesus in our lives and we want to point you to him. So if you're listening for the first time and you want to say yes to Jesus, just reach out and we can send you some information. We can send you a Bible, whatever it is that you need or want. And just ask that you do come into full agreement that Jesus Christ is Lord. He was fully man, fully God, died on the cross, rose again three days later in our place on that cross from the sin, from the past, present, future, as far as that sin is to the east and to the west, that sin is gone. You are a new creation. You mm -hmm. are whiter than snow. He's taken that scarlet sin and he has doused his blood on it for you and in our place on the cross. And you can walk in freedom. You can walk a shame-free life um, for him and just see that there are beautiful plans for you. So we just want you to be taking care of your soul, your mind, your body, and what does self-care look like for you? Only you can answer that, but take some time to reflect. Take some time to think. And if it was your first time saying yes to Jesus, direct message us, let us know. We'd love to come alongside you, meet you, and just get some resources in your hands. This is the FYI Podcast.